I should like to thank the Lincoln Literary Festival for giving me this opportunity to speak about my book, A History of Britain Through Books, 1900 to 1964. In a nutshell, what I've tried to do is to convey the British experience during those decades through the prism of books published or written at that time. And by the British experience, I mean the experience of the British people, not the British state. I want to show how they thought, what their attitudes and prejudices were, how these influenced the way in which people behaved. I want to capture the, the smell and the feel of the period. And I want to do so in order not just to convey an understanding of the past, but also to show how the past still influenced the present, sometimes because we react against it, and sometimes, of course, because we still behave or react in the same way. I approach this task thematically rather than chronologically, and I deal with a wide range of disparate themes. There's uh, feminism, sex and relationships, imperialism, the two world wars, the way in which the uh, standard and conditions of living have altered. So there's a, it's a collage in which different aspects of the time fit together and taken together present, I hope, a coherent whole. And of course I cover a wide range of books. I deal with Virginia Woolf's A Woman of One's Own and Sam Selborne's uh, book about the first group of West Indians in London in the 1950s entitled The Lonely Londoners. I look at Elizabeth David's famous cookbook on Mediterranean cooking and uh, at John Maynard Keynes's general theory of employment, interest and money. I talk about Robert Tressel's socialist novel, very influential socialist novel, The Ragged Trousered Philanthropists and at uh, Radcliffe Hall's uh, novel about the lesbian experience written in the 1920s and banned at that time. I deal with a range of different authors, George Orwell, Lytton Strachey, C.P. Snow, Elizabeth Bowen. So there's a great deal to choose from, and I hope that taken together, as I say, they provide a, a broad picture of what it was like to live during those years. Now, conventional history books uh, provide a complete picture of the past, but they do so with, the ba with hindsight, when we know how uh, stories ended, we know who turned out to be in the right, who turned out to be uh, mistaken. They are also, of course, much influenced by uh, the standards of our own day and the, uh, the way in which we look at things today, rather than the way in which people looked at things in the past. By contrast, con contemporaneous books uh, are rather like a photograph. They capture the moment when the camera clicked and I believe that if you mix and match them, if you read them in different combinations, if you approach them from different angles, you can build up a, a very complete picture of what it was like to live during the, the decades that my, my book is about. I think they help to give you a new understanding both of the past and of the present. I hope too that they bring out some unexpected aspects which make people realise that uh, conventional opinion isn't always the best way of looking at things. To give you an example, in all the recent uh, celebrations about a hundred years of women's suffrage, there was a great deal of talk about the suffragettes, uh, about uh, Mrs Pankhurst and, and her daughter, but nobody mentioned a woman called Margaret Bonfield. Yet Margaret Bonfield, who was born one of ten children uh, into a working class family in Somerset, was a trade unionist in the 19th century, 
doing a huge amount of work long before women got the vote on behalf of women working in factories, women working in the retail trade, w women working in the woolen mills. In the early part of the 20th century, even before Mrs Pankhurst had founded the suffragettes, Margaret Bonfield was giving evidence to parliamentary committees and helping to influence the way in which legislation was formed. Uh, she became one of the early members of the, of, of the House, House of Commons, not as famous as Lady Astor, but unlike Lady Astor, she was the first woman to sit in a cabinet, yet in the Labour cabinet of 1929-1931. She's a forgotten figure, but I hope that by reading this book, people will realise that here was somebody who was actually doing practical good and making a practical difference long before those who were better known came on the scene. And that's just one example. There are others as well. So I hope you will read this book with interest. And I, I should again like to thank the Lincoln Literary Festival for the opportunity to talk about what I have written.